Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. Again, I'm so happy to be with you. Today, I am recording from the American Society Aging Conference up in Chicago, where, again, I'm learning about how I can better age for myself and take good care of myself, as well as learning some new ways to help caregivers. I've attended a lot of sessions on caregivers, and I hope to interview several of the wonderful people that I've met while I'm up here. One of the ones that I've met today is Dr. Eloise Stiglitz. I said your name right, right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Eloise, you have your own company called Embrace Your Aging. You're in, in Orlando. Tell me a little bit about what you did before you started this company and what led you to start your own company called Embrace Aging. I am a clinical psychologist, and I've spent most of my career in both being a clinician as well as in higher education. I was a higher ed administrator, vice president of student affairs, spent a lot of my career working with students, but my main passion has been basically human development. And as I developed, I got more and more interested in the next stage of development, which is where I am, which is the older stage, Mm -hmm. calling it the second journey or the third act or whatever you want to call it. After I retired, I took a job working with Jewish Family Services, working with two senior centers, uh, coordinating those two senior centers, and really immersed myself in learning more about aging adults. I took then that knowledge and that experience with my passion as a clinical psychologist and merged the two to decide to do my own encore career and my own business in terms of coaching, helping people midlife and beyond to start thinking about how to solve those challenges of transition. Because there are a lot of transitions that we all face as we're aging. And for those of us who are boomers and are aging ourselves, and then taking care of what I like to call an elder versus a senior, you know, maybe it's an aging mom or dad or aunt or uncle, somebody in our life, and you're working full time and you're taking care of that loved one who you love so much, it can just be such an overwhelming Role. I applaud you, first of all, for delving into that field because we caregivers, everyone who listens to my show knows I'm one, Mm -hmm. we need coaches, we need wellness coaches to keep us going, to keep us motivated, and to help us take good care of ourselves. I haven't always been too good at it. And clearly, if you can't, don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the person you're supposed to be taking care of. Because you're number one. It's kind of like on the airplane where they say, put your oxygen mask on first before yeah. you put it on the person next to you. And that's an important first step, is remembering you're first. Yeah, it's hard to do, though. It's you know, very hard. I say it, and I've said it for, for years to caregivers, and then I found myself a couple of times not doing so well at it myself. It's hard. I think um, the the multiple tasks you have, the guilt, the mixed feelings, the demands, all those things get in the way. And to sort through that and kind of of almost swim through it to get to the point of, I count. You touched on a lot of um, emotions that caregivers go through. Mm -hmm. So many people are taking care of their loved one out of guilt, not necessarily because it's a role they have chosen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's they've been guilted into it by other family members. Sometimes they feel obligated to. And there are a lot of studies we know now that um, show that why you are a caregiver impacts your own wellness. For those who feel like they had no choice and that they're obligated and maybe even stuck, they have a lot of emotions that um, obviously go along with that that impact their overall emotional and physical well-being. Mm-hmm. So let's let's turn the corner here just a little bit and let's talk to that, that caregiver. Maybe she, she or he is burned out. Maybe they are in a situation where day in and day out they've been taking care of a loved one without any other family support. We know that's very, very common. Um, and maybe that person's on the verge of burnout. Do you have any advice for them? Well, one thing I suggest people doing is making a list of all the things that they used to like to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, They may have forgotten what they are, but kind of pull that up. And when they have a moment, they have that list to go to. And it may be a 
10 minutes listening to a podcast, which is for you. Uh, it could be a half an hour walking through the park. But, but if you don't have that list in front of you, when the moment is there, it's like you can't even think of it because your focus is on the person you've been taking care of. And, and the other one is that to remind yourself that there is love, it's not just guilt, Right. And um, and I think that when you remember the person that you used to know, and I think it helps you get in touch with the positive feelings that were there and that they can come back in again. And it's not just the, oh, my God, i got another task to do, and, oh, my, there's, I feel so guilty that I'm not doing a good enough job. And, and, and that's the next tip is to remember the good job you are doing. Yeah. Um, there's always a million things that you could be doing more and better. But, yes, you, you got them a cup of coffee this morning. Yeah. That counts. You got them their oatmeal. That counts. And each one of those tasks count, and you have to give yourself credit for those. I think all too often we're not too good at that, you know, and I agree with you. We need to give ourselves a pat on the back because it is a role that not everybody chooses Mm -hmm. to take on. Mm -hmm. A lot of family members don't, and if you've done it, you need to, as my friend Eloise said, Give yourself a pat on the back. Know that you, you're doing a good job, and you're doing it because you love your, your loved one. And there mm-hmm. are joys mm-hmm. in, in taking care of somebody mm-hmm. you love. So the time to focus on those is here and now on the joys that you find. I know that in taking care of my dad, sometimes I feel like I'm the task person. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he calls me because he needs me to go pick up something from the grocery store for him or get his medication or come and d- d- deal with his wheelchair or something. And sometimes I have to say, let's back up a minute. I just want fun time with you. I just want sweet time with Mm -hmm. you. I'm your daughter, too, Mm -hmm. not just the person who does all these things. And so it's important. Um, Mm -hmm. It sounds like you figured out how to take care of yourself. And you forget that you do that sometimes. But but to, to turn that role and say, yes, I'm a daughter, and the medicine... We'll get to that, but right now let's play Scrabble or yeah. let's just sit in, on the rocking chair and look at the those the sea breeze or whatever that yep. you can do together and enjoy their company. That's what we all want is to enjoy them, love them, hang on to them, and yeah. take care of them yeah. for a while we have them because yeah. we know that tomorrow may not be. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you for letting me interview right here spur of the moment at this conference. I appreciate you, and I look forward to getting to know you better. I look forward to getting to know you better, too. And so thanks for this conversation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Eloise. You've been listening to Tula's Tips for Caregivers. We'll be right back.